welcome to Get the Word in Your Face International. This is Pastor Cheryl Jackson coming to you with a word from the Lord. God is good. He is good all of the time and worthy to be praised. He is the Most High God, El Elyon El Che, the living God, who loves you with a true agape love. He wants to fill your heart and your mind with the knowledge of His will. He wants to give you wisdom and spiritual understanding in who He is and what we are in Him. We are his children, the offspring of Christ Jesus. And we are to be filled with the knowledge of God, the knowledge of his will. We, we want to have a spiritual understanding because we're living in a world that is spiritual first and then the material. You know, God created the world and all that there is in it, everything was created by him and for him. It was not seen first. It, it was not the seen that was created first, but the unseen that was here first. God is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the ending. He is the first and the last. He has always been. There's no beginning and there's no ending. The Alpha and Omega. And we have been called by him. The Bible says that he is love. God is love. And if he is love, then we are love. Because we've said yes to him and we're now transformed. We're made new. We're made whole. We're made to be... We're made into the image of the Son. God is love. And if we love him... We love each other. We love the world like Christ loves the world. God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son that whosoever would believe on him would not perish but have everlasting life. And we want to reflect the glory of God. We want to reflect the very image of the son. We want to become like him so that all will see and all will know that Jesus is the Son of God, that God is, and Jesus is the Son of God, the way in which we come to be saved. He is the salvation of God. He's the only one that could take the punishment that mankind deserved. We deserved it for rejecting him. The moment we were born into this life, moment we started having thoughts of yes and no when we rejected our parents we rejected God my goodness anyway all of us are born into sin and Jesus took that it took the body that he was given and he did not bow a knee to sin he did not bow a knee to sin. He went all the way to death on the cross without submitting himself to the God of this world. And he made us free. He made us free because not only did he go down into the grave, but he got up again. He took the keys, the authority, away from the enemy the power the authority I want to say the authority because the devil still has power but he took the authority to rule mankind and ascended into the heaven now we who believe on the Lord Jesus Christ have life we have life I mean the real life we have the life God is life if everything originates from the Creator Himself, <laughs> if we abide in Him, we're going to have life. John chapter... <laughs> it's funny. It is, what's funny is that I started off a whole other way this morning in this Word. And the first words that I heard this morning as I was looking at the Word, and I'll get to John chapter 15 right now while I'm thinking about that. But the first words that came to my mind this morning were, run to the fountain of life. 
drink freely. Run to the fountain of life and drink freely. Because this word is the key. It's the key to your heart. It's the key that brings you into the knowledge of God, that brings you into the will of God, that causes you to speak what the Lord is saying to ourselves, to our family, to our life, to the life of those around us, to the, the life that is in the world. We want to bring life to the world as Jesus has brought life to the world because Jesus is in us. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is with us and in us and to us and through us, and we can do all things through him who is the strength of our life. We have to practice not allowing our minds to get weary, especially in any well-doing that we're doing. Any, in any good that you're doing, don't get tired of doing it. Trust the Lord and let everything roll over on Him. Cast all your cares on the Lord because He cares for you. We're going to walk through some hard places, but the Lord is always the strength of your life. You are a child of God. We are His children. And yeah, the things in this place, they hurt. One day there's not going to be any more pain and sorrow, no more hurt. No more death, no more dying, no more crying. But while we walk through this world, remember in your heart, we're not of it. And don't let this place wear you out. We have life with the Father and the Son forever. We don't have to deal with any more of that sinful nature being in us. In fact, we can quench a lot of that a lot of those feelings and thoughts and arguments that come against the knowledge of God even when they're in our own body. It doesn't have to be coming from someone else out there outside of yourself. You have your own thoughts to deal with. I want us to be so in love with Him who loves us that I want us to become the love that He is. No, we'll never be Him but we're like Him. Bible repeatedly tells us we're like him. We're being changed. We're being created in the image of Christ Jesus himself. If he overcame the flesh, the devil, and the world and tells us we are more than conquerors in him, then so can we. If we would just not lean on our own understanding, but in all of our ways, come sit down in here and with him and drink from the fountain of life because he is our life he's our peace he's our strength he's our refuge our high tower we can trust him and my other title was going to be trust in him because we can lay every, every I mean every emotion every feeling every dot every thought we if when we know him his words come up Spirit of God, the Spirit of Truth is reminding us of all truth in every situation. The Word of God is your defense. Yeah, the enemy goes around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Temptation is out there to, to, to tempt you. Thoughts are tempting. Feelings are tempting. But we reject every thought and we make it captive to the Word of God. Remember, I know the King James says Christ. We make every thought captive to Christ. But look it. He's the word that became flesh. Everything about our our life is the word of God. It's the, it's the authority. It's the key that brings everything into place. It makes everything subject. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. That's what's in our heart and in our mouth. That's the salvation we speak. The word of God. He put it in our heart. He wrote it on our mind. <laughs> the, re the way to get out of our situations and circumstances. The spirit of fear is real. And the deposit that 
the spirit of fear leaves in our flesh. It, it's present in situations and circumstances. You could stand by yourself and all of a sudden you, you feel this anxiety coming up. Something is just off. It's not right. Guilt and condemnation. It, it, it just comes and lurks on you. It sits on you. And all of a sudden you don't know which way to turn. And you, you don't feel right doing anything. Hmm? Even bitterness and anger. And, and all types of, uh, what is it, gossiping. Hurt and slanders. They come out of your mouth lying. It, these things come out of you. And yet we need to kill all this, destroy all this works of the flesh, all this stuff that we were born into when we were born without God. The Spirit of the Lord is in us. God has put His Spirit in our heart. And that Spirit, the Spirit of God, God Himself is pouring out love. We're able to walk through the situations and circumstances of this life, laying down those thoughts and images, casting all of our cares before the Lord, and He hears us. This word is heard throughout the whole universe, this word that you speak, because God already spoke it. Let me say that again. The words that we speak if we're speaking the mind and will of God, are heard throughout the universe. Because God, our Father, already spoke these words. Everything works together for the good of those who love God and who are called according to His purpose. What I'm saying is that if we're in love with Him, His love is in our heart and we're speaking life to things. We're able to bind the things in the earth that are going on with us and with others and loose the will of God in the earth. As we loose the goodness of God in this land, then it's loosed in heaven. The angels hear and they hearken to the word of God that you're releasing, that we are releasing. Let me get back to this. The word is our life. It's our, the lamp on our feet is the light on our path. And as I was going about my business this morning, I just want a heart that's completely His. I, I don't want anything having any hold on me. And I'm talking spiritually, having a hold in my flesh. I, I have to, uh, you know, get over my cup of coffee in the morning, too. I want to give this up because I don't want it having power over me. And that might seem like a small thing to a whole lot of people but if I crave it, if I want it, I don't want it. I just don't want to have it power over me. Let's not go into all that. But but these feelings, this mind, will, and emotions that has been so beat up, so hurt, so troubled, so not understanding. When it's in the word, it has life. I was I'm telling you, I was looking at this word and I, and I saw things like Proverbs chapter 20, chapter 14, verse 26. It says, In the fear of the Lord is strong confidence, and his children shall have a place of refuge. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life to depart from the snares of death. Uh, I, 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 don't, I don't think it's talking about physical death. I mean, you're going, everybody may die until the Lord Jesus Christ comes and we get caught up in the air with him. But to be separated from God is what the word death always reminds me of. To be the fear of the Lord is the fountain of life to depart from the snares of death. Psalm 91 talks about the Lord as our refuge. Let's just peek at it real quick. How many minutes do I have? Okay. Where are we? He that dwells in the secret place or lives in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He's my refuge and my fortress. He is my God. In Him will I trust. That word trust again. 
Surely he will deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. I love how it says it in the King James because there's noisome pestilence. There's words, there's darts, there are arrows. They're, they're coming out at your mind and they're trying to hinder your steps so that you would not get up and go about good today. You know, other people might not act good around you. But that's got nothing to do, I don't want to go all the way over there again, but it's got nothing to do with your attitude. See, we are the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus who died and rose again. We are the offspring of Christ Jesus. His seed is in our heart. The knowledge, and the knowledge of God is in our heart. The knowledge of who he is, of what he is, is in us. And that's all we need. That's all we need. When the knowledge of him is in us, there's no weapon formed against you that can prosper. There's no snare of the fowler that can hold you because you know to whom you belong. Okay, I'm gonna leave this alone. Proverbs again. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life. When I came to this word this morning, I had understanding as I read through some of these Proverbs, he bring me back to life. It's the Lord who establishes us. It's him who establishes our hearts and our minds. And I'm just saying today, cast your care before the Lord. Sorry, I'm not gonna be able to finish like I wanted to. <laughs> The Lord is the strength of our lives. Here's a verse out of um, John chapter 15. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you will, and it will be done unto you. Herein is the Father glorified that you bear much fruit, so you may, so that you be, <laughs> so shall you be my disciples. See, the Lord is with you. He's with us. He's not going to stop being with us. We have to come and sit in him. And to sit in him is to come and abide in this word. And let this word get in your heart. Let this word get in your eyes. Drink from the fountain of life freely and we'll produce the fruit of the spirit. We'll produce the fruit of life. And that starts with love. Loving yourself because God loves you. And loving others will come from that. But trust the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. Let your joy be full. Because he said he would fill it. Bye-bye.